it's Hope at Crafty Hope, and I am working in my small junk journal, and this is page 10. Now, the page in this was a, I don't know, some kind of crumpled piece of paper that had some blue ink on it. And as usual, I decided to cover it up with collage. Now, I know that's getting boring for everybody, but it's a great way for me to get a jumping point to go from there. If I can just block out some of what's actually going on there um, with these pages I don't like and put down things I do like. Now, I'm putting down, I think there's a piece of an envelope with some pencil marks on it. There's a typewritten letter, typewriter written letter. And a lot of these things I got in a what you might call it, a box of ephemera that I bought at a, like a thrift store years and years ago, and I looked up on it, and so I have all of these little random pieces of paper that I love to include in there, and then there's a piece of a music paper, so there's that, and I kind of mostly cover up that blue, and then I just put down a little bit of gesso, I think this is the Finnebear um, white gesso and I am again trying to cover up that blue some and just kind of spread it across those pieces of paper to kind of incorporate everything and I used a palette knife to just spread it out. Now for my paint that I'm using here this is a master two masters touch paints from Hobby Lobby one's a red and the other ones is a turquoise blue and I love that color combination I don't know what it is about um, that bright red and then kind of a light turquoisey blue that just appeal to me so much. So it's mostly red here and I put a little bit of that blue down and then I'm going back with the gesso to kind of blend some of that to push back some of the red and um, blend those. And then I'm just making some marks with a, I think that's a drawing pencil. Um, I don't think the marks actually went in there. I think more than anything I scraped into the paint. And then I dried it real quick. Um, it's not completely dry, but I did dry it a little bit. And then I'm protecting all my surfaces with some paper around everything because I did, spray tends to get everywhere. So I sprayed this, um, it's a tulip um, fabric paint that I really like the opacity of it. Um, and I sprayed that down in a couple spots just to get a little bit of yellow down. And then I've got a spiced marmalade distress oxide that I am putting down some X's. Now this is a set of stamps that I hand carved. There's a one big X, two medium X's, and three small X's. And I think for this one I'm using the big X's just to get that touch of orange down. And then I am pulling out I think my two medium X's and my three small X's that I hand carved. Now, some of y'all have asked for a um, look at some of my stamps, and I am working on that. I don't really like what I recorded, but I'm trying to see if I can work with it. Anyway, I took another Distress Oxide, possibly, I think that was probably just black soot, and put down the three small X's on there just to get, I really love those three small X's. I put them on <laughs> everything just to get a little bit of contrast in there with the dark. And I've got a Posca paint pen here, and I've decided to draw some kind of, um, I don't know, like leafy flower type things over on the side. They're not really the focal, but just kind of to give something other on the page. I had to dry my page really good to get those that Posca paint pen to show up because with the sprays and the paint and all of that, it just, you know, was kind of soaking in there and not really standing out. So I've got my little drawings. Again, these are nothing special. I think I had seen somebody else do something similar either on Instagram or a YouTube video or, or something. And I was like, I really kind of like that shape. So I slapped those down and went for it. And this is some more Tim Holtz stuff because y'all know I love my Tim Holtz. <laughs> and these are some of the chipboard words, or I think that's what they're called, something like that, that I got here recently. And they've got all kinds of little things, um, different fonts and sizes, and some of the words are repeats. But I'm 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 digging the set. And so I picked out what I want um, to put down there. And I've got some just black thread that I had left over from sewing something on my sewing machine. I took all my little clippings and made a little pile and then uh, put that on my craft desk so I'd have it to throw in my journal and I am gluing that with some I think it's 3D gloss gel from Finnebear um, and I'm gluing those couple things down um, as you see it didn't stick real good so I'm adding more and I'm using just a paintbrush to get those things down on the page and I thought 
with that I was gonna be done but here I get a glitter marker and these are just really from the Dollar Tree they've got a couple different sets of them and I wanted to add a touch of glitter on there not anytime I add glitter to the page just because I want to add some magic and I think what had happened here is I was seeing a very rainbow spectrum of colors on the page and I didn't have any green so I needed some green and some magic and so I threw that down with that glitter marker and then decided I needed a touch more of the yellow to really bring in that that rainbow spectrum. So I grabbed that tulip spray and put it exactly where I used, you know, the tip of the inside bottle and just put that exactly where I wanted. And when I did that, that pushed back some of my green. So I went back over again with that green to bring that magic back in. And that's it, guys. I really love this page. Like I said, it's got that whole rainbow magic quality that I adore. So if you like this, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, check out some of my other videos, and let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks. Bye.